So James, uh, Danone was a huge hit. Uh -huh. And what is the formula, if any, to introduce these new characters and make them, them blend into the big picture? I don't like to look at it like it like we have a sort of math mathematical formula. Sure. I, I think it's more sort of an instinctual thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, we, we, we try to create sort of characters that we like and that we care about, and mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you know it becomes very apparent when we're making the films that uh, that certain characters, you know, maybe certain sort of like haunted artifact mm -hmm. would, would be more popular than others. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you know, and the audience pretty much let us know, you know, if they like something, they, 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 they literally would tell me on social media that, oh, we, will, we would love to see a movie based on so-and-so. Mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty organic process. So Gary, why bring Annabelle home right now? <laughs> <laughs> he thought this was a really um, uh, great way into the story. Ed and Lorraine, they retrieve the doll from the nurses and they bring it home and they bring it into the artifact room and James and I really wanted to explore what it would be like to bring this doll home and, and its evil is now in the presence of all these other artifacts and what mm -hmm. that must do to really charge up the room. Yeah. Uh, we thought that'd be a lot of fun to play around with. How is it now to have your vision in Annabelle Comes Home? This is my directorial debut. This is the first time I directed, so I, I was happy to step up to the to the plate on this one. Uh, you know, I wanted to really tell the story of, 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 of Judy Warren in this one. We've, mm -hmm. we've, we've gone in and done a deep dive on Annabelle and her creation in Annabelle Creation. And on this one, I wanted to explore what it would be like to be the daughter of Ed and Lorraine Warren mm -hmm. and live in this house, which has a room full of all this potential horror. I sometimes see things. Like how my mom sees things. The doll, it's a beacon for other spirits. Uh, this is Annabelle Round 3. What's the secret to keep the concept fresh? I think the secret is we all approach these movies as fans first. We're mm -hmm. the first audience members and stuff. So if, it's, if we're bored or if we're, you know, uh, we've seen this a hundred, you know, we know that's how the audience is going to feel. Mm -hmm. I think we're very cognizant of that fact. We're very self-aware in that, in that way. We want to make it feel fresh for us. So hopefully mm -hmm. if it does that, then it will feel that way for the audience as well. I think that is very important. Um, the fact that it's, um, it's a sort of bigger, big, bigger universe um, means that each movie has to be different. It has to feel a little bit different. Sure. Um, otherwise, it, it will start to feel very, it start to get stale. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to keep each, uh, you know, each story that we spin off feel fresh and, uh, and unique. Uh, you know, like the Annabelle films, obviously I centered around her, but each one of them have a sort of different tone and flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And it was very important with The Nun that The Nun felt more like a, uh, like a medieval horror film. And, yeah. uh, and it was a visual that we haven't quite seen before. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that's very important for me that I try to push for with all, all these films. When did you realize that it was possible to expand this universe? Well, it was something that was very sort of, um, very obvious when we made the first Conjuring film mm -hmm. that uh, that we were only making telling once telling a story based on one case and the L Warrens have so many cases yeah. that they have ex mm -hmm. explored and investigated over their lifetime and uh, and you know we always sort of joked among ourselves mm -hmm. that uh, that it would be great if we were able to tell lots of different stories yeah. if we were lucky enough to do so. And do you have any Ed and Lorraine's um, favorite story? Ed and Lorraine's favorite, like, case file? Yeah. I mean, Annabelle certainly has, is, you know, has, has been very well, very good to me, but, and uh, it has a very rich history. But the first thing I do when I think about all these movies is go back to their books, and they've, they've really investigated a ton of cases. It's so great. I mean, they've investigated haunted houses. Mm -hmm. they've, uh, they've, they've done, you know, exorcisms. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's really just a, I mean, it just kind of runs the gamut when you, th when you talk about horror. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's really, a, you know, I, I call it an embarrassment of riches in terms of resources. I actually have a lot of story, mm -hmm. a lot of favorites of this, but one of them that I really love and I wanted it in this film, or at least be introduced in this film, okay. is their case where they investigated a man who was possessed by the spirit of a werewolf. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah and that, that's actually one of their more sort of famous cases mm -hmm. that they have. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I would love to see uh, a, a, a Conjuring Universe werewolf <laughs> movie. This 
this is such a girl power movie. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about that. I love the babysitter movies, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, the, the, that horror movie trope mm -hmm. that, that, we, that we all know so well. But this movie wouldn't have worked without the cast that I, that I, I, that I have. And mm -hmm. they're so great at what they do, and they really elevated the material. Yeah. And um, they have such strength of character themselves, and they brought that strength to their act, to the characters they played. Sure. Uh, and I so I'm, I'm really deeply indebted to them for that. I would like to know what scares you the most in a good horror movie. A good horror movie is one that um, that works for me. It is one that kind of understand the audience, and that if they understand the audience, they know how to sort of um, break the audience's expectation mm -hmm. and just kind of you know show me things I haven't quite seen before. Sure. Um, I try to do that with my films, you know, uh, even though they 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 sort of based around sort of familiar stories, but I like to try and show it to an audience in a different way, and that's what I like to see myself. Okay, great, Gary. Thank you so much, Thank it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Victoria.